What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. My name is Splattercat and we are here today playing Sunless Sea, which is one of those games that has absolutely entrapped me. I really do enjoy this game. When I realize that it was my Sunless Sea recording day, I get really, really excited. I, I, I'm I really feeling this, so let's go ahead and we're going to try to do some adventures today because I know the last couple episodes have all been a little bit humdrum. And so, in order to kind of dispel that miasma that's been around in the game a little bit, we've just been doing like very menial tasks the last few times. I went ahead and I did some of the grindy stuff off camera. I ran from here, London, to Godfall over and over and over again. I think I went seven or six times, I think. It took about two hours, and I grinded up a little bit of cash. We've got 1,700 Echoes right now, and so I think we're going to do some upgrades. That's the first thing that we're going to start out with, but we're going to go to the story, and I want to buy lodgings first, so we're going to go to London. Oh, I have prize money awaiting? When did that happen? I totally forgot that I had prize money awaiting. Well then, that's nice. That's lovely. And so what I can do is we can purchase an elegant townhouse, which will then allow us to write our will, which means that our property goes to our next character. That means that all the upgrades and whatnot on our ship will just get passed on over, I think, which sounds like a pretty good deal. However, it is very, very expensive. It costs us a thousand echoes. And so we'll go I guess we're going to go ahead and do that. So... It says, you have your crew cart your things from the blind helmsman to your new address. If anyone respectable calls, they'll pass as servants. Resting is now more expensive, but more effective. Why is it expensive for me to rest in my own house? That seems a little bit weird. Last time I checked, nobody charges me a bill when I walk into my own house. That's a little bit strange. A hundred echoes? Dear God. That is, and you heal two wounds. I don't even think we have any wounds. And you get two restful nights. So apparently to get the restful nights to stack, I talked about this with somebody down in the comments previously. In order to get the restful nights to stack, I guess you've got to have your own townhouse because we couldn't get them to stack previously. I tried off camera. I loaded a save and I did something kind of cheesy, but I rested like five or six times and I only got one, rest, I'm, I only got one restful night. And then I loaded the game back up so that I got the money back just to find out. Do a little experiment. So it is really expensive for us to rest in our own house now. That's bad. We also appear to have lost the option to accumulate. We can't read the paper anymore either. You used to be able to read the paper. All right. Well, I guess it's kind of a for a thousand for a thousand echoes. I kind of feel like that really wasn't the best investment. I can't read the paper anymore, which means I can't get news, which means I can't diminish my terror with Hunter's Lodge anymore. It means I have to go carousing now whenever I want news, which costs money, whereas before I could do it for free. Not carousing, but I could get news for free, so we've actually been nerfed quite a bit by buying our own house. The only benefit I can tangibly see is that now we can write a will, but basically everything else has gotten more expensive. That's really disappointing, in fact. Like, I expected this to kind of be an all-around benefit, being a homeowner and... It was not. Okay. Well, it costs us a lot of money to write a will. So I'm not going to do that right now because I wanted to upgrade the ship. And disappointed with my purchase now, I'm definitely having buyer's remorse. I'm not happy with where we ended up. For, for a thousand echoes, that simply isn't the benefit that I thought it would be. It's actually more of a detriment. It hurt us quite a bit because now we can't read the paper. I think we're probably just going to buy a bunch of fuel. Like, fill the entire hold up with it. And we're going to head to the east. And we're going to do a big cut to see if we can unlock the rest of the map. And we'll just grab a whole bunch of port reports along the way. So 27 fuel should last us a while. Hopefully it doesn't explode in the hold. We will go and let's go take a look at... I think the we don't have much money left over, so it's not really going to help us. I was thinking... Uh, we have to have... Okay, well I'm going to hurt myself again. Because we need to have hold space, apparently, in order to buy items for that we're going to equip. So, since we've got the hold space, we wanted something that equips to the forward deck. Because that's empty. And, wait, which is empty? Our deck is empty, our bridge is empty, our auxiliary is empty, and our aft is empty. Okay, but our... I'm assuming that's the forward is full. Okay. So we need a deck gun. Let's go ahead and find ourselves a deck gun so that we fare a little bit better in combat. There it is. So we need a deck gun. I think that looks cheap enough, the Cotterell. We'll take that. I mean, it's ten. It's very, very cheap for ten irons. 
So we can take that, it goes right there, and that so that just buffed us up to 54 irons, which means that we've actually got reasonable skill in irons now. I think we should probably focus on mirrors next and seeing if maybe we can upgrade our mirrors. We've gotten them up pretty high using the secrets that we've accumulated over time, but I would like to see those be a little bit more efficient. Let me see if I can buy anything for the forward deck as well to kind of beef us up a little bit. We can get this right here, and that'll give us torpedo twos. We can get harpoons. Let's get... Oh, I don't know. I don't know if I want harpoons or torpedoes. Let's get harpoons. Harpoons sound pretty badass. And so we'll take this over here, and let's slot that in. And now we're up to almost 60 iron, so we should be able to hurt things now, which has always been one of the big detriments that we have, is that we're strong on the sea when it comes to sailing and seeing things and tricking people, we do very, very well. But when it comes to a stand-up fight, we do very, very poorly. I don't know if I should maybe... Hold on, let's let's test that out. I mean, I've been treating my lodges, my lodgings now as though they're a slouch. And so what I would rather do is let's go back and see how much terror we lose by doing this. If it's something ridiculous like 10, then we'll probably never use this again, but... Yeah, it's something ridiculous. Okay, so we lose 10. I think that was not the best way to spend my money, so I'll probably never use that again. Unless I really, really need the restful nights. Disappointing. Very, very disappointing. I would recommend not buying your own house unless you really, really, really want to make a will. But even so, your character, it should be pretty easy to stay alive in this game. So I wouldn't worry about it. Let's go carousing so that we can get some recent news. We'll lose five more terror because I want to make sure that our terror is low before we set out on a big adventure. That night in the wolf stack, you find yourself sharing a table with someone whose name you do not afterwards recall. Your only love is the Z. You take cover. Oh, the likely last. Don't think I came down to the docks just to see you. I've got business here, but all right. It did cross my mind that you might drop by. Sure, let's go see what she has to say. Shared warmth, new memories. It's harder to say goodbye this time. And so we lost two terror. And did we get a new... Okay, I didn't know. Sometimes I started playing Fall in London. And when you play Fall in London, I've come to appreciate like these weird little stacking cards that they give you every now and again that dictate like how good you are at certain things or like how deep your relationship is with a certain person. And so I now I'm going to be more on the lookout to kind of see things that are stacked. If you wanted to play Fall in London with me, it is a social game. Like It requires other people to, in order to play very effectively. And so... Feel free to add me. My name is just Splattercat on Fallen London, and you can invite me. I don't have to, like, add you or anything. You can just kind of throw yourself straight into my game if you wanted to. I actually, we've got full crew, so I think we should probably fight this guy right here. It'll also give us an opportunity to test out our deck guns. So let's see what's going on with him. And on this first engagement, what does this do? A wild salvo. Enemy illumination less than 50. A minimally effective attack that randomly affects your enemy's illumination, sometimes decreasing it, always increases your own illumination. We've also got the Flaming Salvo. Harm Z monsters and crew has little effect on hull, increases illumination only moderately. Needs harpoons one, ashore no more than... Okay, so we've got some interesting new stuff. I'll probably just stick with our... Oh, he's going to open with a Wild Salvo. Interesting. <laughs> it, dealt, it dealt zero damage. I actually wanted to see how hard we hit him. We hit him for minus 28. That's not quite as high as I was hoping for. I was hoping that by upgrading our damage a little bit, we would be able to... They closed that before I could see how much I did on the next one. Let's send it back with a prize crew. To the victor goes the spoils is back up in here. And we'll drop the news off at Hunter's Keep. That should allow us to get our terror back down to almost zero. And then we will go on a massive adventure all the way down. I think we'll probably go... Just down this way. We'll hit Mutton Island. We'll probably hit Mutton Island, Godfall, Polythreme. We'll probably check this island right here. I don't think that there's anything in the middle. I am trying to get a bunch of port reports this time so that when we get back, we can earn ourselves a decent amount of scratch, like maybe 300, 400 echoes. But much beyond that, I mean, I don't know. We may have to... Oop, let's go here. They're not taking visitors, so let's go ahead and deliver the news. And we'll use Lucy right here to get our terror back down to there. 
Good, and then that gave us one supplies, which is nice because we are going to be on the sea for a while, and we are a little bit low on cash, so if we get ourselves into trouble, that could cause us problems. However, I'm going to be trying to stick to land masses as we go through the game from now on. I'm also going to hunt crabs as much as I can on the way down to the south. In fact, it may be a good idea just to hit the Cumaea Canal and then head east and just hit everything along the way. It'll be harder on supplies, but we'll get more done if we do that. So I think I can make the jump from here over to London fairly easily without gaining any terror. So let's do that. We'll skeef our way on by. I think we should only get like four pips the last time I tested it. Yeah. And so coming down to here. The crab is way over there. That's okay though because our hunger isn't that high yet. Once it gets higher, that's when we want to hunt him down so that we get the maximum effect out of it. With 13 supplies, I think we should be able to make a pretty good run. I, I'm not totally confident in our abilities to make it all the way around the map with only 13 supplies, but the fact of the matter is we've run out of money. I mean, we no longer have the cash that we need in order to continue operating in an efficient sense. So, you kind of let these things happen. On the horizon, a sickly yellow light glimmers for a moment, then fades. Is there an easier... Uh, I don't want to go all the way around the horn for the Cumaea Canal, but I may have to. Eh, let's just cut across. We'll take the tear for now. I could have made it out a little further. There's like a little rock out here, but I don't know. The V-motion might have taken longer, too. I'm trying to look out for supplies right now, essentially. Sitting on 13. Okay. Okay. We'll probably end up gaining like three terror from that. It's not so bad because our terror is really, really low right now. So I'm not worried about accumulating it too rapidly. There we go. So the Chameleon Canal is here. We want to watch out for those guys. I went and I fought one on one of my Godfall runs. It didn't go so well. I felt like we were definitely still getting overpowered pretty heavily. And I think I, even with the new guns, I'm not so sure we can handle them. It is nice that we've unlocked new abilities though. That's pretty cool. So we've got new things that we can deploy in the case that we want to get experimental in our warfare. The Cumaean Canal. Let's go ahead and listen for... Gather information for the port report. Okay. We've got the perfunctory port report. We'll gather gossip. And so we got... A card game ends badly when one surface sailor knifes another for the usual reasons. Oh, we got moves in the great game. We can sell that to the Admiral for a lot of money. And a port. I think we get a Admiralty reward too. So now that we're here, we probably want to make the jump to this little island, then to Godfall, then down to Polythreme. All the while keeping an eye on our supplies. So we're already down to 12. We just ate. I may have poorly balanced this. So this journey might actually be a lot shorter than... Oh, I should have hit that light right there. I wasn't paying attention though. We definitely want to skeef past this island right here. And I forgot to mention this, if you click this bubble right here, you can make your ship go even faster, but chances are it'll probably blow up. Like, your ship actually can blow up if you get the heat too high by adding too much fuel. And I've clicked it a couple times, and each time I've almost blown up, and so it's actually sort of a worrisome button. You don't really want to tempt fate with it very often. Only use it when you're in dire straits, and blowing up is slightly more desirable than being blown up, I guess. And so we're sailing through the Skull Sea again. These skull anemones. Nothing bad happens if you sail over these. I tried it out while I was running wine back and forth. I went back and forth across one of these. Your terror doesn't go up any higher. Like, really nothing happens. It's just sort of creepy and ominous. Back along the side of Godfall. We'll grab the port report from here. Okay, we got the port report from Godfall. Our next stop is going to be Polythreme, and we're going to get a little bit of terror by default by going there to get the port report, as I recall. I think you get like five terror automatically whenever you take a port report from there. However, it is more valuable than other port reports. You get like 40 echoes, I think, for it. So it's not a terrible cost. Let's go ahead and I'm going to follow this around until I've got a nice straight shot. We could go to the Tides of Appetite right there, but I don't know if we can jump this little channel without gaining one terror. We may even gain two. Ooh, we didn't. Good. Okay, so in gaining one, let's dally for a moment, and then we're going to cut hard to the southwest, south-southwest, 
to avoid these guys. Luckily, we are more maneuverable than all of these ships. The rewards for killing those are kind of iffy too. Like sometimes you get really good stuff and sometimes you get really, really bad stuff. It just sort of depends. Let me cut the engine slightly so I don't run into the wall. We'll go around the edge right here. And they are trailing us pretty aggressively. Oh, well, what are you going to do? It looks like the ground is made out of teeth right there. So from what I understand about Polythreme, having played Fallen London right now, and also from extrapolating your comments that you left, Polythreme, everything is alive. That's just kind of a baseline quality of Polythreme. Like, the rocks are alive, the bowls are alive, your forks are alive. Everything here is alive. And so I think after a while, you could definitely see how that might inflict major damage upon one's sanity if it was already undamaged. If it was damaged, then god, you'd probably be raving and throwing poo at cars by the end of the weekend. But Polythreme, let's go in here, we'll gather intelligence. We got five tear, we got two fragments, and Polythreme. That's good because we really, really, really need more fragments. We haven't had fragments in a while, and so if I can't get my hands on those, they sell Stygian Ivory right here. We only have 35 Echoes anyway, so we can't really afford anything useful. It might be more intelligent to hunt bats. We also haven't seen anything up in the north with Port Palmerston. Well, we'll see what we can do. Let's cut east to Pigmoat. We'll go to Khan's Glory and we'll try and spy, I guess. And is there anything out this way? There's a little island that's in between these two points that I wanted to check out. If our supplies start to get a little bit down towards like 5 or 6, we'll start to head back. I'm trying to keep an eye on it so I can figure out where the halfway point is. When it's down to 6, that'll be our reasonable halfway point. And we should probably turn back. Use the remaining supplies to gather port reports on the way back home. The creeping tendrils of fungus, zeeweed, unnameable flora. We enter the snares. That sounds unfortunate. Crab cake. That's a little bit endearing. That's like a nickname that you give somebody you really like. From the crab cake, we're probably going to go to the east a ways to Pigmoat. And from that spot, we'll grab ourselves hopefully some fragments or something. We need 25 fragments in order to do the next port report because they dropped it in Wither, which means that it's expensive to do your fragments. We only have like nine right now. We're in really, really bad shape when it comes to fragments. Inside of land, just in time to stop Terra from creeping on up. Terra's already at 30. We've only been at sea for like a day. We have the most skittish sailors ever. Then again, in a world where everything comes to life and tries to kill you, that might be worrisome. I don't know if we can fight that shark yet. I think that's probably a bad idea. Oh, there's nothing here at all? Okay, well, we've yet to reach the halfway point, so I think I'll probably go out this way. I think you can kill the shark by default. I'm not so sure, though. Let's try it. Let's see if the shark can be slain. This might be a bad idea, but we'll try it. Come here, Sharky. The Bound Shark Attacks, the most tormented of Z-Beasts. Its murderous eyes peep from the cage flesh like convicts begging release. When it's all said, it's really just a big fish in a cage. And you, you are a Z-Captain. It's nimbler than you are, but perhaps you can distract it with a Zailer. <laughs> Your crew won't like this, though. Let's, let's see if we can engage it. I don't really know what it's going to do. It may eat us. We may die instantaneously. It's okay, though. It's not that I'm feeling suicidal. It's just that I feel... Like we can handle it. Oh, we got lucky right there. So let's go ahead and we'll open up with salvos automatically It's got 75 life, which means we could have trouble with this It's down to 49 24 Ready another salvo just in case Got it. We got it flawless. Hell yeah, we did it. I am so stoked about this. Use its meat. Its torment ended with death. You have more immediate concerns. If you have 10 observations, yeah, you got to be out of your mind to try and observe that thing. I bet it would tear you up if you because it was already using the attack that kills crew. We can eat it or we can examine its cage armature. Let's examine it. The cage has begun to distort its shape more than seems reasonable, but then a shark has no bones. Rods of iron inserted deep into its flesh have done impossible things. There are organs in there none of you recognize. Its suffering must have been extraordinary. You take a tooth as a trophy. If your hull is damaged, your engineer will repurpose some of its cage as repair materials. So we got 30 fragments. Oh, awesome. We got a hunting trophy. 
We gained terror from looking at it. We gained hull. That's good. And we've succeeded in a pages challenge. I kind of want to fight more of them. That actually wasn't so bad. I mean, I feel I get the feeling we got the because we had a crit right there from our flare where it went up way more than it should have. So I feel like we probably got ahead of any serious wounds, but still, it's awesome that we killed a giant shark, and now we can take that back to Godfall and show it off. I don't know what the hunting trophy does, but we'll find out. Let's go to Khan's heart, and we'll do a little bit of spying for Her Majesty, for the Empire, for the moves in the great game, and we'll see how that works out for us. Last time, it didn't work out so great. Last time, it ended up sort of ostracizing us from the public. I think we got, like, suspicious of motives, like one or two or three or something like that. However, it looks like it diminishes over time because it's not in our hold anymore. I don't think. Yeah, I don't have anything in our hold that indicates that we have been a failure at spying, so maybe we're not failures. That's what I keep telling myself anyways. This music's my jam in this place. Every time it comes, I gotta roll my head around like Bill Cosby, just like, mmm, it's my beat. Bring it down. Drop it back. All right. I actually, I really, really love Bollywood and like India. I like beats from India that are then mixed. You like throwing like some synth in there, make it snap, make it pop. Love it. Absolutely love it. Sounds amazing. All right, so we're back at Khan's heart. I should have brought coffee back here, but we don't have any money. We can wander Khan's heart and just kind of see what happens. We can gather intelligence specifically. It's chancy, 60%. Let's go for it. We've got rivalry between... Okay, so now it says the white and golds are watching you. I guess that's not good. We'll wander Khan's heart for a little while. Foreigners are restricted to the copper quarter, but... Okay, so I guess we're not in the... Co I thought this was the copper... Oh, we are in the copper quarter. Okay. Hold on, let's see here. One key of histories. How do we get the key of histories, I wonder? And obviously you can only buy things at a ludicrous price here. I'm feeling brazen. I sort of want to fight this guy now. I sort of want to do it. I'm feeling like it's not a bad plan. Let's do this thing. Let's fight him. Let's see here. We'll show them what Londoners are made of. Oh, he's got a hundred hull. This might not work out for me. I guess we'll start off with flare. Oh wow, he used potent flares. Oh, that reset my ability? That's bad. That's really bad. Oh, hell. We might be in trouble. I think we're really in trouble. Yeah, we just got wiped out. There's so many one-shottings in this game. Ah, well. We slip beneath the waves. Your ship founders, there are screams, a float of dark water, the unforgettable sound of a ship's spine breaking. Slip beneath the waves, you will be remembered in song. And like so, our Sunless Sea LP comes to an end. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for a Sunless Sea LP. The game is a little content light at the moment, but I do like it. I really enjoy the game. I can't wait to see the final project. I do think some of the ship battles need to be kind of ironed out a little bit. Getting one-shotted should not be a thing in, in games. I don't like being one-shotted. It's something that I strongly disagree with in game design. I think that that fight should have gone at least long enough to where both sides get volleys off, if you know what I mean. But, couldn't be helped, I suppose. Trying out new things, and anytime you try anything new in this game, you're going to die. It's kind of the roguelike aspect of it. You find the same thing when you play other roguelikes, where you try something new and you die the first time, and you're like, alright, well now I know never to try that ever again. And that's that. My name is Splattercat, thank you for joining me here in the Nerd Castle for Sunless Sea. I look forward to seeing you all in whatever it is we decide to do next. Take care out there, everybody, and as always, hi do.